Rolling? Hello everybody on YouTube, it's Ross from Ross.com here. I have a friend of mine, uh, a glutton for punishment I guess, wants me to look at his truck. He just bought it. Uh, I think his name is what, Square One on my internet Square side. Square One, on yep, yep, on the site. Forum there. Yep. And um, I told him, bring it by, uh, you know, he's a new owner operator. You, you haven't owned a truck before. Never. Never? And you just got your CDL? Monday. Wow, he's a glutton for punishment. Absolute green. <laughs> green as green could be. Green as green could be. So how did you find my site, really? I mean, well, green guy like that? Usually people don't find my site until they're already having problems with their engine or they're, they're like looking at how to solve something. And, and I can see why. Um, I have a problem with, I do a lot of research. You know, I want to dig, okay. dig, dig, dig. So, so realistically, what I want to see, they all have problems. Let's find out um, who can solve the problems. That's kind of the way I was with my first truck. I was mm -hmm. like, I was like, I know I'm getting this kind of truck. Why don't I do all the research I can? Because people say they had this problem or that problem. You know, you look at the Get internet. Prepared. There's a lot of, like, a lot of negative around trucking and a lot around trucks, especially. That's right. Where's the positive? You know, so that's uh, that's kind of what I was looking for is both. Mm -hmm. And I, I really couldn't find a lot, so I had to learn the hard way, like anybody else. Yeah. And you know, that's how my website came about and everything else, trying to help other people. But and that's really how it showed up. I mean, I, I started looking. Um, like I guess we had mentioned before, originally. I was going towards Detroit, uh, no real reason, but as I did more research, I said, hey, it doesn't matter what's on the front, doesn't matter what color, they all have the issues. Okay. So let's figure out, uh, hey, who can solve the problems, who can get it back on the road faster? Inevitably, yeah. downtown costs money. So, yes. Cummins, Rawls.com. Yeah, well, uh, you got a red Cummins engine, obviously, we'll take a look at that in a minute. And you got a Cascadia, it's a day cab. I guess you're gonna do local work and- Local work, um, So you were looking at day cab specifically. Correct. Um, very, very rarely would I ever travel outside of a 100 mile radius. So, okay. um, home every night. So, I just wanted something simple, short wheelbase. Maneuverability was a big thing for me. Yeah, so, these things have a tight, tight turn. Exactly. Um, I think this is a 183. So, I just wanted something yeah. that was going to be uh, easy maneuver. And uh, you get in neighborhoods or whatever the case it is. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's hauling grass. So, most likely it's going to be in spots that don't always yeah. have the biggest area to move around it. Yeah. And uh, it's a very highly profitable truck, the Cascadia, because it's very aerodynamic and mm -hmm. they have really good on fuel. Mm -hmm. And they beat mine, my Pro Star, in weight class. So you could actually haul heavier freight than I can with this thing. And especially being in a day cab, but even if it wasn't a day cab, uh, they're generally lighter than my truck. And they'll, they'll, you know, with the same specs and everything, you know, comparing my truck to a Cascadia the same year with the same engine and the same rear ratios, if you, if you had everything the same, mm -hmm. They would be really neck and neck. The Cascadia right. would probably slightly beat it for the weight because of the weight. Mm -hmm. So it's a very profitable truck, but they're Cavalier, not a Camaro. You know, we were talking right. about that a little bit Correct. ago. Correct. Correct. They don't like off-road that much, as far as my experience with them and other people. You know, working with other people with them, you can't beat them up like mm -hmm. you can an old, you know, an old square nose. You know. Yeah. They, they not nearly as rugged. That's piece right. of equipment, you know, exactly. from yesteryear. It's, exactly. it's, it's not a yesteryear piece of equipment. It, it has to be cared for. It has to be driven right. But when you do, they make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll make you a lot of money. They're That's really a, a, highly profitable and fuel from the research and efficiency. That I was, you know, and again, like I said, I want to analyze everything. I want to know exactly what I'm getting into before you take the dive. Um, I'd rather not find out a shallow before I jump off the board. Right. So if you you, you get into it, um, these particular trucks, you're right. They're, they're, they're very bare bones, um, but if it pays X amount of dollars per mile, yeah. why why find well, the, the drug? Get the one that's most profitable. Yeah, see, that's the way I'm in. You know, I have a Pro Star. It's a newer Pro Star. Mm -hmm. They have a little more, the maintenance is required a little more often than an older truck would be. Mm -hmm. But even, even you know, if you, if you stay after it and you chase that and you keep after that, mm -hmm. they make so much more money than an older truck. Right. When you do run them correctly and, and keep everything after them correctly. That there's, there's, I wouldn't even consider an older truck. Now, if I was running it out of a quarry or a dump yard or something where I was just gonna beat the crap out of the truck every day. Forward. Yeah, I'd be a little reluctant for this thing. Yeah. But you're hauling grass, you're gonna be around town kind it's, of it's, stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a 90% highway, maybe 10% off-road. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's strictly uh, to and from the farm. Whatever that small area is, you know, by the time it gets back to so pavement. this is not a bad choice at all, mm -hmm. really. It's just gonna, it's gonna make you a lot of money. Good, that's, that's a plus one on this uh, punishment. <laughs> I'm did you just get thing. lucky with this or did, you know, how, how did you end up with the uh, Cascadia? Let me tell you, I, I've actually, like I said, I, I've done a bunch of research. Originally I was going with a Columbia. That's, that's, that's yeah, what I was I going with. Yeah, I initially wanted a yeah. Columbia back in the day too. That's yeah. where I was going. Um, but it almost seems like the Columbia was, was 
even more beat down every time I find one. It's yeah, they're, it's, yeah, it's like they were got just some age on them. Now. Yeah, exactly. They got a little age on them, a little wore out. Uh, so it was hard to find one in decent shape. So I didn't really have a mileage in mind. Um, obviously, I wanted the lower the better, but but I did have a price. I did have a budget for the entire operation: truck, trailer, and also I have a Moffat or, or, or um, piggyback lift. Okay. So I had a. Um, <clears throat> I had a, a figure in mind, that's why I wanted to stick around, that's what I wanted to do. So again, cost per mile was going to be everything, but the more I looked at it, it was between that Pro Star and, and this Cascadia. When I actually started getting a little further into it, I just found many, many more day cab Cascadias that, now, after combing through, uh, literally, I'm not exaggerating, hundreds of trucks, yeah. hundreds of trucks, what you begin to realize is that, yeah, they got a lot of makeup on them, but underneath the makeup, they're rough. I mean, they're just, they are rough. You could take yeah. and, you could polish anything you want. Paint covers really a lot of problems. Absolutely. They'll sit there and they'll pound it on it. And that's what I didn't want. Um, when I came across this truck, to give you a small background, this truck had 2250 fuel pump failure. It wiped it out. Had, it had the, the infamous exactly. fuel pump the engine infamous destruction yeah, I mean, the, the, the absolute last five, thing you want to hear. Code in the dash. The yeah. last thing you want to hear is a comment on Complete donut. engine destruction. It, it wiped yeah. it out. So yeah, yeah. Um, this was an uh, um, ex-Big Fleet truck. Okay. Came out of Florida. And... Um, the guy I happened to be talking to said, look, man, I've got a truck. It needs an engine. I said, let me see everything you have before you do anything to it. I want to know the condition at its 360,000 mile state. Yeah. Don't make it pretty. Yeah. You can make anything pretty. So uh, fast forward, um, you know, flew out there, checked it out. Like what I saw, I mean, obviously you had to put an engine in it, but yeah. um, that's kind of how it uh, arrived now. I mean, so okay. other than a good cleaning, so to speak, yeah. and, and uh, just some maintenance, it, this is pretty much what it yeah. looked like. So when they put your engine in, they made a mistake. Well, they, they sort of did and didn't. Well, like any because dealership. Because they're just a shop or dealership. They're Look, just trying to get this. It's truck, a dealership. You know? um, yeah. Good, good. As far as I knew, good guys. Good Look, people, I, I, yeah. I've, I've talked to a, a bunch of different people whenever I deal okay. with this. Um, about as straightforward, straight shot as I can possibly get. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, they're in it to make money. So right. if you take this engine and you already have laying in the yard out of a 16 model truck, we're going to stuff it in this 13 model Cascadia and we're going to sell a truck. And that's exactly what they did. Now, yeah. And to them, that's probably a to them it was because fine. it's a newer engine than the truck. Exactly. Hey, man, but you got to. What they didn't realize is that they are two very different engines on the They're, they're taking two different. And, and yeah. again, um, through through. I can only do so much research and find so much information. There's a lot of information out there, but honestly, until I come across the site, um, you and I speaking, I didn't realize just how big a difference that 2350 was to the 2250. Now they, they look the same on the outside. They they, they bolt they, right in. Exactly. They I mean, very very close. And you know, according to the the the, the guy that sold it or the, the the company that sold it, like you said, hey man, you got a 260,000 mile engine. I did verify that through the fleet that it came from from the yeah. salvage truck. And they thought, hey, this is a um, 2350 updated fuel pump. Yeah. In their eyes, all of this is, is everything's new. This is man, you can't Same get it bang. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, which it makes. But a lot then of they sense. looked at the emissions on the truck, and it's 2250 emissions. It's 2250 emissions. Which correct. The difference between the emissions, uh, roughly, the biggest difference is on the 2250 engine. The controller for the emissions was actually a separate unit mm -hmm. on these trucks, and then for the 2350 engine, they put the controller back into the computer of the engine. So they're not compatible with each other as far as that goes. So what happened was, I guess they, what you said, they put the 2350 engine in here and then realized, hey, we need to it, put the 2250 control computer you got it, exactly. on, you got a 20, on the 2350, 2350 engine to make it work right, right because of all the rest of the emissions and the controller and the wiring. That's right. So that's what they did and they thought, ah, it's close enough. It kind of is, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. The problem is the 2250 engines, uh, from my understanding, they're about 17.3 or 17.6 compression ratio, 17.6 mm -hmm. to 1, 17.3 to 1. That, that's what I read. And the 2350 engines are 18.9 to 1 compression ratio, uh, which, you know, okay, simply compression ratio would just be minor settings in the computer or differences to run the engine properly. Right. But the other problem is it has a different combustion chamber design. The 2250 engines, the, the, the spray angle on the injectors and the combustion chamber is much different from the spray angle on the 2350s. It's much more horizontal on a 2350. Mm -hmm. And so this creates some problems if you're trying to run a 2350 engine with 2350 injectors and 2350 injector cam. You know, everything inside the engine is designed for the higher compression ratio right. and the, 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 the newer style injectors and all this. With that older computer, as far as I know, there is no program from the red engine maker to run that. Mm -hmm. So now you've got this quandary, you've got this engine, and they, they did the best they could. It runs. I mean, uh, exactly it does what okay, they wanted. right. But it's going to create a little more emissions problems. It's going to be more sensitive to, you know, issues with that. Um, the difference in the compression ratio and engine design is, you know, um, 
the the injection timing spread, you know, per se, mm -hmm. on the 2250 engine is um, much wider than the injection timing spread on the 2350 engine. Now, I don't want to say what it is. You know, I know what it is, but I don't want to, like, you know, say all this proprietary yeah, sure, stuff sure. for my YouTube videos here. But um, it's about two to two and a half degrees an hour. And what happens is this one starts to run a little bit on the lean and a little bit on the detonation side. If you try to run this engine with a 2250 ECU, mm -hmm. especially at higher horsepower ranges and, and high torque loads. So what's going to happen is it's going to run lean, uh, which may be good for the emissions, maybe a little less, uh, you know, carbon, you know, or stuff. But the problem is it's going to get the pistons really hot. Right. It's going to create more internal friction for the engine. So inevitably, you take this risk of it shortening its life a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's the first of all. And second of all, you also, you're not going to get the efficiency out of it that it's supposed to have because of that mismatch, you know, different spray angle, different right. kind of injectors. You said that they, they, they didn't even know to put the injector trim coats from the older engine into no. your new software. Into that, your that's new, correct. Your that's yeah. correct. So, so you, you pulled the, the valve cover off. Yep, and correct. you got the the little code, the barcodes on the injectors. Barcodes on the side. I bet that was fun trying to look at it in between the valves. Yeah, God, that's like, hard you know, to see. First three acceptable. The last three, yeah. I'm an aero truck. It, Mirrors and lights. Contortion. And, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So um, yeah, you reading it. backwards. But you know, we were able. Basically, when you pulled up on inside, when you pulled up um, that program, it's it's. It's like nothing happened to it. Yeah, like they just it took the ECU off the old engine. Exactly. They didn't do anything. So, so um, yeah. you know, injected uh, trim codes. So uh, you put the injector trim codes in it and correct. you ran the overhead valve adjustment? Ran the overhead valve adjustment. That was, you said um, that was pretty close already. Yeah, um, you know, one and, and, and two thousands were, were the most I saw. With 260,000 on the engine? It end? had uh, okay. confirmed the uh, yeah. 260,000, right at 261,000 on it. And then, right. you know, obviously you looked at your injector cams and all that stuff. I made a video well, with yeah, the one guy that helped him with his exactly. truck and his injector cam was white. Whatever so you had went through that today. And that's what that, you know, whatever, whatever you had went through, what I wanted to know, um, you know, I'd gotten as much information as I could without putting hands on. Now that it was here, let's let's do as much research as we can. Let's, let's go through the truck. Let's pick it apart, yeah. Yeah, and let's that's, take that's, a look. that was when I, when it touched ground by, by, by me, I wanted to make sure before it showed up on, on your property, look, let me do everything I possibly can to make sure that it's, uh, you know, as good a state as it could be in before we're trying to fix this, um, you know, 2250, 2350 right. child we got going on here. I'll, I'll so. help you fix that part of it. We'll figure out what to mm -hmm. do and we'll do some research and get that straightened out so that it works as, you know, properly. I've done that a few times mm -hmm. with a few other people that have been in that situation. So, anyways, but uh, you're here wanting me to pick apart your truck and, and pick on it. Pick on it, like, like the DOT man, I guess. Hey, look, like I, you know, I, if I find, if I find yeah, out yeah, here, we, we you, have a good you conversation. Want to do this before you put it on the road. And, exactly. Like I said, everything I'm doing is opinion based mm -hmm. on experience. You know, you take it with a grain of salt. But uh, I do have this knack of when I say something's going to happen, for some odd reason, it almost always does. It's weird. I saw one guy, hey, your airbag looks like you're getting ready to go out. He made it 30 miles. So I, I said, <laughs> hey, this is, you know, it's kind of odd. So if I say it, just, you know. Hey, you know, to take it as, as literal, but no, but that, that's the point. Yeah. Another set of eyes, another yeah. set of that, that's a that's a big deal. Um, so you, you said that let's go ahead and open the hood. Cut.